I've been looking for an affordable everyday camera that takes film-like photos for the last few years now. And after lots of searching, I think I finally found one. This mirrorless interchangeable lens camera body costs less than $200 and sports modern features such as in-body image stabilization, a touch screen, customizable function buttons, and built-in arch filters similar to Fuji's film simulations. This camera is the Olympus 10 EP3. This camera was released all the way back in 2011. It features a 12 megapixel micro four thirds image sensor, and it feels extremely robust and well built. Despite being over a decade old, I also think that it looks quite fashionable and it still fits in well among the modern uh, retro aesthetic that's so popular right now. This camera is very compact, and to give you an idea of just how small it is, I'm gonna go ahead and throw up some shots here of it next to my Fuji X-T3, which is a relatively small and compact camera in and of itself, uh, but it dwarfs over uh, the EP3 and makes it look tiny. This camera does feel really, really well designed. It feels good in my hand, uh, and I can easily reach all of the controls with just one hand on the camera body, which is something I really like when I'm shooting casually and not trying to put too much effort into my photography. Because it's a micro four thirds lens mount, uh, you can easily find a wide variety of lenses that are affordable and high quality to shoot with, uh, which is a big bonus compared to something like Fuji where you're a lot more limited. Uh, this camera has a built-in pop-up flash, uh, though admittedly I've never used it because I can't stand the look of on-axis flash and for off-camera flash. Uh, right now, you can easily find this camera body for under $200, and if you get lucky, you'll find it bundled with a lens for not much more. Uh, my copy was listed for $175 on Facebook Marketplace uh, here locally, and it came bundled with this 25mm f1.7 lens. I actually didn't pay anything for this at all. I traded an old GoPro Hero 7 Black uh, for it that I just had collecting dust. Now, being an older camera, this certainly has some drawbacks, and I'll talk about those a little bit later. But first, let's dive into the image quality that this camera produces. While I give you my thoughts on the image quality of this camera, I'll go ahead and share a variety of photos that I've taken with it and let you make up your own mind. Now, as you look at these, keep in mind that I'm not a pixel peeper and these were not intended to be the world's most artistic photos. I bought this camera to document my daily life, so I've been using it to photograph a lot of things like going out to get a drink for, with friends, or taking my dog for a walk. Um, I've been using this camera for about a month now just to casually document my everyday life, and I've been pleasantly surprised with the images that it produces. Now, they definitely aren't as technically sound as a modern camera would produce, um, but overall, they have a quite pleasing uh, warm tone and feeling to them that reminds me a lot of the film-like quality that everyone seems to be chasing after right now. Uh, the 12 megapixel sensor uh, certainly isn't super high resolution by today's standards, and you're not going to be able to, you know, really crop in like crazy or print massive billboards with it. But personally, I only plan to print up to maybe an occasional 8x10, uh, I guess in extreme cases, maybe an 11 by 14 But this will get that done just fine, especially for just casual family type photos. My first DSLR was a Nikon D40 with a 6 megapixel sensor, and I printed all kinds of stuff from that that I never had an issue with, so I really don't buy into the megapixel hype. Uh, I truly don't think that anybody needs a 40 megapixel sensor like you'll find in, you know, the X106 these days, just to document their daily life. The only slightly technical test that I performed as far as image quality was a high ISO image comparison, and here I'll go ahead and show you uh, the same photo that I took at a variety of different ISOs, uh, ranging one stop apart from ISO 200 through 12,800. Uh, this is an area where this camera definitely starts to show its age, and it honestly reminded me of just how spoiled we are with modern high ISO performance. But the more I shoot with it, the less this bothers me. I find that if the images are properly exposed when taken, you can get very passable quality up to ISO 3200, and in some cases, even 6400 doesn't look too bad. One thing to be aware of, however, is that if you underexpose this in camera and try to save it in post by increasing the shadows, the noise is going to be significantly worse than it would be otherwise. Uh, this is an area where this really lags behind modern cameras. Despite being over 10 years old, this camera has a lot going on for it. I really like its build quality and its compact size, and overall, uh, it's just a very simple camera to hold and use. 
you know, when I'm going out to dinner or taking my dog for a walk, I, it's easy to just throw this camera over my shoulder or the camera strap and forget that it's there, which is exactly what I want in an everyday camera. The IBIS works surprisingly well considering how old this camera is, and the autofocus is a lot faster than I thought it would be. It's not going to keep up with fast moving subjects, but for just photographing, you know, slow moving subjects or still subjects, it's pretty fast and responsive. The metering is actually reliable and accurate, and that used to be a problem in cameras, you know, 10 years ago, but this one's pretty good. Uh, and again, I like the images this camera puts out. They have a warm, pleasant appearance that I just tend to enjoy. Now, moving on to some cons, obviously a 10-year-old camera is going to have some downsides. To start, as you've already seen, the high ISO performance is lacking. Uh, even in 2011, reviewers at that time noted that the ISO performance was lagging behind the competition then, and so it certainly doesn't compare with modern tech in that regard. The control layout, uh, while intuitive, does have some flaws. There are no dedicated white balance or ISO buttons, and while you can assign these to some custom functions, uh, there are other features that I would have liked to be able to put on those buttons if these had dedicated, you know, controls of their own. Uh, there is no viewfinder on this camera, so you're stuck using only the rear LCD to compose and review all of your images. Now, for a casual camera, this doesn't bother me, but it can get annoying in bright sunlight when you're trying to, you know, really see and make sure your image is in focus or properly framed. There is an accessory viewfinder that plugs into a port on the back of this and connects to it, uh, though I've not been able to find one to purchase, and I don't know that I even would for the casual intent uh, that I have for this camera, so I can't comment on that. Uh, additionally, there's no dedicated joystick to move the autofocus point around, which is something that I really enjoy about my Fuji cameras these days. Uh, though I have been able to adapt on this camera, to use the touch screen to select focus points, which works better than I would have thought for a 10 year old camera. The touch screen is pretty responsive. Finally, the menu system on this camera makes absolutely zero sense to me. I've spent a lot of time using Fuji and Nikon menu systems, and I've always thought that even Fuji's menu systems were pretty bad compared to Nikon, uh, but this is a whole new level of terrible guys. I really don't understand the menus. I can never find what I'm looking for. Navigating them is not intuitive. And I thought this might be something I'd get used to, uh, but I've been using this pretty consistently over a month now, and I still just can't figure it out. Luckily, since I'm only using this camera to take casual snapshots, I very rarely have a need to dive into the menu, and so it hasn't proven to be too much of an issue for me. Overall, the pros outweigh the cons of this camera for me personally, and I've become a big fan of carrying this around everywhere I go. The downsides I mentioned definitely annoy me at times, and while I could certainly resolve them by choosing a newer and more expensive camera, I'd then be spending a lot more money and probably spend a lot more time worrying about losing or damaging it and not carrying it around so much. I absolutely love that the investment I have in this camera is so minimal that I really just don't worry about dropping it, losing it, uh, getting it rained on. None of that stuff bothers me because if I, if I destroy this camera, I'm only out less than $200. Um, and for the time being, this is my favorite everyday camera. I've been taking this everywhere with me to document my life, and I plan to keep doing so. Now, maybe in the future, I'd like to compare this to something like a newer uh, Pen Series camera, like an EP6 or an EP7, uh, as I'd like to see how it's advanced as it's gotten newer. I also think that this might be an interesting comparison to something like the Fuji X-E1 because they're sort of similar in some ways. So maybe I'll make videos about those things as well if I get my hands on those cameras. Overall, uh, this is a really fun camera to carry around and use and it produces great nostalgic film quality photos that I've been enjoying a lot. If you guys have made it this far into the video, thank you so much for sticking around. My name is Destin, and this channel is my place to share my love for photography and the adventures that it takes me on. If you're into that kind of thing, go ahead and subscribe to help me grow a community around my passions so we can all interact and grow together.